Right, we're not doing a proper vlog today. I have something I need to get off my chest. If you watched the NHS is failing my family vlog that I did probably about a month or so now, you'll see where this is going. Ooh. I haven't even got time. The intro can be me filming Dave the dog run around the garden. didn't even run around right and that says it all about how I'm feeling today um, a little bit of context you do kind of need to know what's been going on lately for this video to make any sense so I apologize if you're new to the channel today this probably isn't the day to be new to the channel up here or here or wherever it is there'll be a playlist that'll bring you up to speed with everything that's been going on with Sproglet our autistic son but long story short he's we've been we've spent the last goodness knows how many years trying to get him some kind of help for his autism, his anxiety that stems from the autism and a variety of other issues, not least of which is his eating. He's been referred to a dietitian about three times in the last four or five years and not once have we had an appointment come through. Um, I mentioned on one of the vlogs last week that he's now stopped eating crisps because the lovely people of Walkers have ever so slightly changed the bag so that below the barcode there's this extra little thing that wasn't there before. To, to you or me, that would just seem irrelevant. Who cares that they've done that? To him, it is the end of the world. They're now a completely different product. It took him a long time to find a crisp that he enjoys and now that's been taken away from him. Now, for the last four or five years, certainly, for most of the time that I've known him, crisps have been 80% of his diet, salt and vinegar Walker's crisps. He eats, I don't know, at his peak, probably 15 to 18 packets of salt and vinegar Walker's crisps a day. And he goes through spells where there's not a lot else. Sometimes he'll add potato waffles, sometimes he'll add bread rolls, sometimes there'll be chocolate biscuits. Used to drink milk, but that hasn't been the case for four or five years now. But the one constant that there's always been is salt and vinegar Walker's crisps until now because he won't touch them. Um, if we give them to him in the bag, he just stares at the back of the bag, has a really close look at them and then just rejects them, throws them in the bin. If we put them to him on a plate, he fusses that he didn't see them in the bag. It's different from what his normal routine is. And because of that, he's dropping weight and dropping weight fast, which is a concern for all of us, obviously. And this is where the NHS and CAMS, the child mental health people come in because it's just not being handled very well at all. You'll remember a few weeks ago, we went to Boston for an appointment with the child psychiatrist. It's the first time he'd managed to see him for a long time. We left that meeting really positive. He'd been prescribed medication for his anxiety, something that he'd had sort of fast acting. I only allowed it a couple of times a week medication last year and it seemed to work okay for the half hour an hour or so that it worked but it certainly wasn't a long-term solution they took him off that because it was addictive why prescribe it in the first place why make that the first thing you try but they finally tried him on something that he can take every day and will help we were promised we'd get that prescription within two weeks it's already been more than two weeks but we'll get to that then nearly two weeks ago now during my half term when we were taking him into school we had a meeting a child in need meeting with everyone to do with his care so we were there his head teacher was there his social worker was there representative of cams was there representative from his respite care was there someone from the local council was there there were a lot of people in the room and again we left that room feeling really quite positive about what was going to happen next now some of it I'm hopeful it's still going to happen. One of the things that is happening later this week is we're, well, not me because I'm back at work, but Anna is going to be having a meeting with his school and a couple of other people to change his educational healthcare plan to allow him to have one-to-one -one care, which will hopefully mean someone can come out, sit with him and either help him do some educational stuff at home or maybe even help get him back to school. But also in that meeting, aside from the educational stuff, the CAMS people promised that they would rush his prescription along because it was so obvious that he needed it. Do you remember me mentioning it's already taken longer than the two weeks they told us it would be? This is their idea of rushing it. We still don't have it. Now they've already told us that this medication is going to take six weeks to start working once he starts taking it. It's already been three weeks. We were hopeful that the times added up just right so that when I'm off in the Easter holidays 
and he's back at school for a week. We have another week of overlap like we had before. We were hopeful that it overlapped just right so that I could try taking him into school again with his medication working. That ship has already sailed. The medication won't be working when that happens. But on top of that, we've now got this food issue as well, which is anxiety based. And there just doesn't seem to be any urgency from anybody involved. We're the ones who are having to chase it up. We're the ones who are making phone calls to everyone who I've, I've rung the, I've, between phone calls and emails, bearing in mind I've been at work all day, I've had to ring the doctor's surgery to find out where the prescription was. It's not there. I've been in contact with CAMS. They say, oh, we sent it two weeks ago. I don't care, it didn't get there, send it again. Chasing up the social worker, chasing up anyone who'll listen, and they just palm you off and nothing happens. And here we are, I've been, I'm led to believe I will get a phone call later today, or maybe tomorrow, who knows, telling me that we can finally go and pick up his medication. When we do get that call, it's still not going to be as simple as that, because the last two medications he's been prescribed, firstly they got wrong, and secondly when we finally did get it, because he won't take stuff in tablet form and we had to get liquid and it's not usual to get this medication in liquid, it's had to be ordered in. So even if, in the unlikely event, they finally get their act together and we get this prescription tomorrow, they're then almost certainly going to have to order it because when I spoke to the dispensary and asked them to order some in anyway, can't do that until there's a prescription. They can't even order some in, have it on stock, ready for when we ask for it tomorrow. I am banging my head against a brick wall. It is a joke. And on top of all of that, bearing in mind, he's suffering massively with anxiety. He's not going to school. He's been to school for one week in 15 months and that's because I took him there. He's obviously suffering majorly with anxiety. But now we've got this food thing as well, which is anxiety based, and that's not hurrying them along either. In fact, they're being completely counterproductive and unhelpful because they've decided in their wisdom that the best thing to do, bearing in mind we're banging our head against a brick wall, we're trying to solve the problem, we're the only ones trying to do anything and we're doing anything and everything anyone ever recommends, as well as constantly doing our own research, constantly reaching out to people, putting this content out onto the internet so you lot can help with advice and recommendations and just anything that we can figure out to do next. Not only all of that, but in their infinite wisdom, they've decided that the smartest thing to do in this situation is to tell us that he has a minimum weight that he can't drop below, and if he does drop below that, they'll put him in the hospital and feed him back up. He's already at that minimum weight. The minimum weight they set was his current weight, when he's just at the start of refusing to eat. So obviously he's going to drop weight, obviously he's gonna fall below that minimum weight, and also, obvious to me, is that you can't just put him in a hospital and feed him up. He doesn't eat at home. You can't just take him to normal, NHS hospital and expect them to magically be able to work their magic powers on him and get the boy to eat. It just doesn't work like that. They're going to have to take him to some kind of specialist place for autistic kids and that is the one thing more than anything we are 100% dead set against. He's not going to a place like that. I don't know if you watched the TV show that was on last week I think. I can't remember what it was called but it's awful. These places are awful. He's not going to go to one of those places. So what... I, th I feel, I might just be overreacting, it might just be Kev using the camera to vent again, as I have been known to do on occasion. It's one of the reasons you like it here. But it just feels a lot like, feels a lot like they're threatening us with this thing that would be the easy way out for them. The e I know it would cost more, but the easy way out for them would be for them to just put him in a home for autistic kids and forget he exists. And... I might be overreacting, let me know down in the comments whether I'm just overreacting, whether I'm crazy, whether I'm missing something blindingly obvious. But that, to me, as trying to be as impartial as possible, all the evidence points to that. They're trying to lose him in the system so that he's not a problem anymore. Because once they get him in one of these places, it's not as simple as us just getting him out. They section kids and put them in these places. They'll, they'll section him on the grounds that he's not eating. So he's doing himself harm and he's a danger to himself. I've been doing lots of research on it. It's one of the ways they get kids into these places and once they're there, the parents can't get them out and you don't get any say on which one they go to and it doesn't matter if it's near home or not and they might let you visit a couple of times a month. And to me, the really, the fact that they're, we're getting those kind of veiled threats, and we've had veiled threats in the past, we've had a veiled threat from his school about taking us to court over his attendance when we're doing everything we can to get him in. And it just feels like 
they're willing to pay lip service to help him until they get to the point where they actually have to go out of their way to do something that isn't part of the script, isn't part of the rule book, to actually try something that might work for this individual human being rather than a statistic that they all seem to see him as. And as soon as you ask them to get outside of that, they're so rigid and so tied up in bureaucracy and it's not, I don't think it's the fault of the individual people. The individual people, on the whole, are lovely. But the system and the restrictions they work within means every time they try and do something, they bang up against the same brick wall I'm banging up against. No one gets anywhere. And here we are, four years after we first were referred to a dietitian, still having never seen one. A year after we were first referred to CAMS, still having made no progress with that. Nearly a year after we were first given a social worker who has made no difference. What are we, we've been to, I mean, we must be, it must be close to three figures, the number of meetings that have been arranged in the last year, most of which I haven't been able to go to because they, they arrange them for term time, school hours. I just can't, I can't go to all of them. There seems to be a meeting most weeks though. They never send out an agenda. Nothing ever gets done. They always come out of them with good intentions. If I'm there, I always come out of them feeling quite positive. And then all of excellent positive thing that's supposed to happen doesn't and we get back to the same point we were before nothing has changed nothing is happening and that's exactly where we are again today three weeks on no medication no dietitian no school no progress it is a broken system and i've said it before and i will no doubt say it again it is failing my family and it needs to be fixed somebody just needs to get a hold of this and make something happen. And I tell you something, NHS, I feel like I'm cutting a wrestling promo now, but I, seriously, the moment I don't have to go to work every day, if you think there's gonna be a day goes by where I let this drop and I am not on you trying to make something happen, then you are living in a fantasy world. We are gonna get this sorted. I suggest it gets sorted before it gets to the point where I am hunting you down, chasing you down, outside your office, phoning you morning, noon and night, trying to get some results because this needs to get sorted and it is not gonna get sorted in any kind of stupid way that leaves him lost in a system that he is going to be no part of. <laughs> there you go, got that off my chest. I feel so much better now, my coffee's probably cold. Oh, I've literally just walked in the door from work said to Anna look listen I can't talk to you at the moment because if I do I, there's gonna be a rant that comes out it's much better for all of us if I rant into the camera tell me if I'm being unreasonable I mean that part I don't expect any of you to have a solution but I do hope there are people out there in this wonderful little community that we're fostering who will tell me if I'm being an idiot and will tell me if there's something obvious that I'm not seeing and I'm blinded by being too close to it all but it just seems like such a mess that, to me, as a simpleton who knows nothing about these things really, it just seems so easy to fix, but no one's fixing it. Thanks very much for watching.